Afterglow. The image in question that I'm using is from a sequence of stacked images, one from the foreground and one from the back, uh, but I'm only using one of them. Uh, and I'll normally, when I'm shooting uh, stacked images, I'll shoot one for foreground and background, but I'll work back to foreground so that I know where the sequence is, and then I'll put my hand in front of the camera at the start, my hand in front of the camera at the end when I'm taking the shots. But this one, when I was setting up the camera, I took a full depth of field shot, but it wasn't perfect. So that's the image I'm actually going to use to add the afterglow for this. The light we were hoping for didn't come to what we were expecting, so we're working with what we got. And you'll see by the image in question that I haven't overemphasised it too much. I haven't added new points of light or anything within it. I've only went and added a nice warming glow to the image. So hopefully it'll help you and maybe perhaps give you ideas within your edits. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Okay, before I start, I'd like to point out this is a new version of Camera Raw, Adobe Camera Raw 12.3, and I love it. I've only used it twice so far, but you may notice that the user interface is very familiar. It looks very familiar, especially if you're a Luminar user. So this is going to make workflow seem a lot easier. Now I could edit this entire image in there. This is just a quick image example to show you to take you onto the main editing side of Luminar. But look at this interface. It's lovely and the things that they've added to it, look at the curves. They've added the warm and the cool tones everything in there, the magentas, everything's there. It's lovely. And they've got other small details that they've upgraded. All the tools are over this side. Nothing's over here. You can choose your panel layout. So I could go horizontal, back to vertical, whatever I want, file names, so on and so forth. Well, I'd just like to point that out, this is actually worth a video on its own, but I'll go on with this edit to show you how I'm going to work this. Right, okay. The one thing you'll notice that the eye is white or grey. When it's white, an edit's been applied. So you can see that where I've adjusted this. And down in the optics, the usual chromatic aberration, use profile lens corrections. I'm not going to use that in this image here because of what I'm going to do later on. Nothing special, I just want you to see the edit. This is one image from two or three images that are stacked together. I'm not going to stack this, I just want to look at mainly the horizon line in Luminar and to bring out the colours and everything. So I'm just going to warm this image up. So I'm quite happy with that. The next thing I am going to do is I'm going to get into the colour mixer and you'll see this looks familiar as well. Or you've got HSL and you can take saturation luminance or all and see them all. But because of what Adobe have done here, the working through from this into Luminar is going to be absolutely fantastic. It's going to really speed up the workflow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the saturation of the yellow slightly. I am going to push the luminance slightly, take the saturation a bit more. Because I'm looking at it in the grass. This is a golden hour shot, but we never get the light we were after. So I'll go for that. The blues I'm going to take back just now, actually instead of doing them in Luminar. So I'm going to pull the saturation back just slightly though, because we don't want to take that grey look that I like in the skies and put that into a landscape as well, eh, into a sunset as well. So I'm going to go back about there. Right, everything else I'm quite happy with. Horizon lines level, let's just check. We'll get into the crop tool and we will just draw from there across oh, and it was out so there you go horizon lines better now right I'm gonna click open that's me now in Photoshop my usual is I copy up a layer in Photoshop so I've got this and I'll just name this layer luminar and then I will go into filter select my layer first I'll then go into Filter and I'll go into Skyrim Software and Luminar 4. And then I'm going to take the edit from here. 
the screen that I'm working on, I'm working in a BenQ SW2700 PT. So it's already colour balanced for these images. So it may look slightly different on the video for YouTube. Okay, that's us in. So I'm going to make a few adjustments here. And you'll notice that it is out of focus at the front, it's in better focus at the back. It was a stacked image. So I'm just going to edit one from the stack. I'm not going to edit all of them for this. So the first thing I am going to do is I am going to go in and I'm going to push the temperature slightly. And I'm going to take it over there just to enhance everything subtle. Everything really, really subtle. Uh, exposure, I'm going to lift the shadows. And we'll just take them to around about but further yet because what I'm looking to do yes there is detail here but I'm not so bothered about that detail and the detail I'm wanting to bring out here is so that it leads your eye it holds you and then leads your eye because as you notice we've got a lighter area here darker area here and then a lighter area there so that sends us through the image as well and we've also got the contrast here between the two of these and that will help with sending your eye through the image as well I'm not going to crop this one, I'll crop it to a 5 before once I'm finished because I'm going to lose this here. Okay, next thing, AI Enhance, everything subtle, Sky Enhancer, not too much because as you notice there's a lot of texture going on and I could push this quite far here. And it's actually worked okay for that, it's helped here and helped here, so I'm going to leave it at that, I'll push the accents slightly more but you'll notice it's darkened this when I did that as well. Structure, let's push the structure a tiny bit, not too much because the structure you can take too far within your images. And that's also allowing me to see the lens spots that I never noticed earlier. So that's us, we're cool with that. Next thing, I'm going to leave the colour to last to show you what I'm going to do with the colour. I'm going to get into the details enhancer and I'm going to add more small details in here. I'm just going to accentuate them slightly. I don't want too much to come in here, but I want them just to, if I flick that off, you should be able to see a slight difference. Yep, that actually could possibly go with taking that a bit further. You don't want it too overdone though. So I'm looking around the image to see if there's anything out of balance with that, and I can't see anything at all. No, Okay, right, I could get into the landscape enhancer now. And because we shot this in the golden hour, I can go in and put in some of the golden hour as long as it works with the tones and the colours that are there within this image. So let's just crank this right up to see what happens. Okay, that's gone nuclear, so we don't want that. That's just too much for this image. Let's pull it back slightly, because we want that golden glow. And let's go and see where we come in. To where we are now so that with the few adjustments we've made has actually made the image pop and that's a good thing for this that's actually made this image really really pop so like okay i'm happy with that i'm going to leave the golden hour here as well so i'm going to turn that off no vignette next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to add a slight glow to the entire image and then just pick it out in parts so soft focus bright I also have soft focus or soft glow. I'm going to go with soft glow for this. Again, I'm going to push it right across, see how it affects my image, and then drag it right back. So I'm going to go to there. In fact, I can actually probably take that further to... Th That's actually okay for this. If I turn that off, it's affecting that sky too much. So, let's dial that back a bit. Just a bit there, let's th throw it off. Subtle. And that's what you're after with your images, just nice and subtle. Next thing I'd be looking to do here, is I'd be looking to go into the Orton effect. But before we do the Orton effect, I'm going to go and balance the entire image first again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get into the Pro Mode and I'm going to get into the adjustable gradient for this one. I'm going to go to the bottom and I'm going to lift the exposure on the bottom slightly. Now we don't want it too much, but we want to emphasize the glow of the golden hour here. So if I take that too far, you can see 
again nuclear. So let's just go to around there, just a nice balance between it all. And if I zoom in here, you'll notice that it's not perfectly sharp. It is in certain areas, it's not in others. And I'm, I'll be honest, I'm not too bothered with this image because of the way it was shot, the wind was blowing. I could have pushed my ISO and I did a fast shutter speed and froze that and then blended two exposures together. But I was quite happy just with this look because it was nothing serious. It wasn't for a portfolio or anything. So I was just to get out, capture the scene. I'm going to leave that at that, remembering that I'm still to crop. So although this area here is still in the image, this will disappear when I go to the crop. And I'll take that back into Photoshop and I'll crop it and you'll see that as well. So I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to check the orientation because I see it is coming up to there a tiny bit too much for me. So I'm going to just take that to about there. And I'll run it that way. That way it's going to catch more of these grasses instead of up here. That again I'm quite happy with. Turn off set orientation. I am now going to go in and add my autumn effect. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to go for type 1. But before I do that I don't want to put the autumn effect on this layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer, a new adjustment layer. And I'm going to add my autumn effect here. And... I'm going to push this quite a bit and that for me is just too much so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that back to around about there I'm just going to turn it off so that you can see it so you see that slight autumn effect just there take it up just ever so slightly and then on top of this I'm going to double up on an effect and what I'm going to do now is I am going to go in and I'm going to add more glow because we're going to actually create a blend on this layer so I'm going to go for soft focus bright just to see again it's playing with the sky too much I'm mainly interested in this area not so much the sky, I'm quite happy with the sky soft focus bright might be too much so let's go into soft focus Again, nice and subtle, but maybe just too soft for what I'm looking for. Soft glow. So I'm going to pull that right up so that it goes nuclear. And we're actually getting more control from that soft glow. So let's go for that. Quite happy with that. Let me check the before and after. So what we brought in was this image here. We now have this image here which I am quite happy with. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn that off and I am going to go in to the adjustment layer itself and I'm going to edit the mask in the adjustment layer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit both effects that I just added there, the soft glow and the autumn. I'm going to take them out of this area here. So if I go in and I go brush and I choose erase, and I'm going to take the opacity down just slightly. And I'm going to take the size down using the square brackets. And I'm going to remove those effects from here. And the reason I'm removing them from here is I don't want any glow in the shadows. That's the simple reason. So I'll take that out there. And it is quite liberal as you can see. There's nothing going on too much here. So I'll leave it at that for this. So you get the idea. I've also got some glow down here. And if I just paint in there slightly looking at some of these shadows. See if I paint in there I'm going to affect this. I could apply it with a luminosity blend. But for the purpose of this video I am just going to just paint it out. Just so that you can see different techniques within the software everybody edits differently anyway so I'll just take that out and then we'll let you see where I've painted so it's not really that much and won't affect the image too much but if I turn the layer off and then turn it back on off and back on you can see that that's subtle enough just to get the final effect that we're after what I'll do is I'll get back into Photoshop I'll clean that up 
I'm also going to add in here. So what I'm going to do for this is I am going to add a new adjustment layer. And that's the adjustment layer 2. I'm going to go straight into colour. I'm going to push the saturation. I'm going to push the vibrance. Not too much. I'm going to get into the advanced settings. I'm going to tweak the orange. And although it's affecting the entire image, I only want it in certain areas. And I'm going to affect the yellow as well by pushing the saturation. So we have that there. So that's just subtle. If I take the luminance of the yellow up, we will lose it. If I take it down, it will give us more tones in the background. But look what it does to the sky, especially in this area here. So I'll just reset that and I'll push it ever so slightly. Just there. That'll do. Next thing I'm going to edit this mask and I'm going to go for a brush. And it should still be in, on erase from the last time we did this, but this time I'm going to swap to paint. And I'm going to take my opacity down again to about halfway. Take the brush size up just to about there. And I am going to paint that edit that I just did into this. Now, hopefully you see the effect coming through. And it shouldn't be too much, but it is just that slight glow that we're after. I'll just check where I've painted because I'm only at 50%, so that's that, that's that, that's fine. I maybe catch the top of these clouds just ever so slightly. Just there, maybe there, there. Now actually those clouds have now ruined that for me. So I'm going to get back into your rays and I'm going to take those clouds back out. And in there I'll just check that I have taken them out. Nope, not entirely. I can take that back up to 100% though. So take that out there. And there. There. And there. Because they were beginning to turn a really yucky yellow. So what we have now. If I turn that edit mask off. If I turn that off, you should see a slight difference. And again, it shouldn't be too much. Everything should be subtle. So for me, I'm quite happy with that. Just for a quick edit, just to show you how to add different effects to get a different glow without going, in this case, nuclear with it. What I'll do is I'll go back into Photoshop, clean up a couple of the lens spots, and then I'll let you see the final image. Hopefully you got something from that video and hopefully it helps. It lets you see how other people work. And that's only one of the processes I'll use when I'm actually shooting sunsets and when I'm going for the, the post-production. It just depends on the light and the available light that you have because you don't want to start creating light within an image that wasn't there. Unless you're doing a composite, that's fair enough, but not within one shot of a landscape or a stacked image. That just kind of takes it away from what you've actually shot there and... Personally, I don't get too much satisfaction from doing that by adding new bits of light in. Working with the light we have, though, enhances your skills further. Because as you go down the line and you're shooting and you see all oh, that light there, when you go to take the shot, in the back of your mind, you can see, right, I can add a radio filter to this. I can dodge and burn this. I can warm the entire image up by doing this or whatever, however you're going to do it. And normally you can see when you're taking the shot, you've got the options there and you know exactly or near enough exactly what you're going to do at the end when it comes to the post-production. This is video 99 on the channel. The next video, of course, will be video 100. And for that, if you stick around for that one, I've got a couple of freebies to give away. I have an edit to do and it's an aircraft edit, but I'll tell you more about that one when we get to video 100. Uh, as I say, I've got a couple of freebies to give away. The freebies will be objects that I've created. Perhaps you'll find them useful, perhaps you won't. But they'll be there for you to download and take away if you want. Thanks for watching this video to the end. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more videos, please check them out in the channel below. Uh, if you're currently not a subscriber, please consider subscribing because that would be greatly appreciated. Thanks again for watching. Stay safe. And I'll see you in the next video.